Hey friends, it's Miss Montea, and today we're reading The End of Something Wonderful by Stephanie V.W. Lucianovic. The End of Something Wonderful, A Practical Guide to a Backyard Funeral. First, you need something dead, meaning something that was once alive but isn't any longer. Your something dead will most likely be something wonderful you loved very much as a pet, like a guinea pig or a fish. Perhaps a pill bug. If your something dead didn't leave instructions, it is safe to assume they will be okay with whatever kind of backyard funeral you plan. Because even dead, they know how much you miss them and how much you want to be able to explain that to everyone. But that sort of explaining can be hard. Having a backyard funeral helps when you can't find all the words or when they get stuck on their way out. To start, it is good to put your something dead in a box. Pretty much any old box will do, but avoid litter boxes. P.U. Too stinky. Jack in the boxes. Too springy. Bread boxes. Too crummy. A shoe box is usually the best choice of all. If you want to add things to the box to keep your something dead company, that would be fine. A guinea pig might like an orange nub of carrot. A fish might appreciate a few drops of water. A pill bug might be grateful for a smooth rock pool in your hand. You will also need a hoe. Having lived full but small lives, a guinea pig, fish, or bug generally won't need a large hoe. Now, if you have a funeral for something really big, like a hippopotamus or a narwhal, you will have to get permission from the city to dig a very deep hole. Warning! Don't get excited and try to bury something that isn't dead. Not only is it rude, but it is also annoying when that something dead walks away before the backyard funeral is even over. Being of nautical origins, a fish might appreciate burial at sea. If there's no sea nearby, the toilet is just as nice. It is considered respectful to salute and say something in fish language as you flush. You will want to tell stories about your something dead at your backyard funeral. You can talk about what they did and how lovely they were and how sad you are thinking about all the things you shared together. An example, here lies Bugworth Z. Womperjawed. He enjoyed long walks on the sidewalk, crawling up blades of grass, and avoiding birds. His life's ambition was to travel all the way to the other side of the garden. He was a good bug, and I will miss seeing him on the screen door. You could also explain how being dead won't ever change how much you love them. But if you don't feel like saying it out loud, it's perfectly okay to hug that thought inside your heart too. Funerals almost always involve singing of songs. Some songs can make you cry, which people do at funerals. Some songs can make you laugh, which people also do at funerals. Sometimes people laugh and cry at funerals because that happens too even without songs. If you do cry at your backyard funeral, have tissues handy. There are almost always better for wiping tears in a runny nose than a sleeve. Here's a promise. Crying because of how much you loved your something wonderful before it became something dead is not bad or embarrassing. At a backyard funeral or at any other time, in fact, Crying can also make you feel a little bit better, even if it might not seem like, like it at that time. When your something dead is in the box and when the stories have been told and the songs sung and the tears cried, you can cover up the hole and bring on the flowers. No one knows why flowers are good at funerals, other than almost everyone enjoys flowers at some point in their life. So, they would probably enjoy them afterwards too. 
Don't dig up your something dead just to see how things are going like Maybell did across the street that one time because when something is dead, it isn't going anywhere. Anything dead prefers in all cases to be left peacefully alone. Here's a fact. R.I.P. on tombstones actually means rest in peace. If you were supposed to dig up something dead, the tombstone would say, rest until someone wants to see how things are going. And R-U-S-W-T-S-H-T-A-G really doesn't fit as nicely. It's hard to know how to end a backyard funeral because even when it's all over, it might feel like it isn't. And maybe it isn't. You see, it's possible you still aren't all the way ready to say goodbye to your something wonderful that is now something dead. Maybe you want to curl up close to where you buried your something dead and have chats every so often. Maybe you want to read them your new library book on mummies or tell them about the third grader who threw up in the drinking fountain and clogged it. Maybe you just want to sit with your something dead and be quiet for a while. Whatever you want to do is just fine. Funerals come at the end of something wonderful. Just remember, it's not the end of everything. You can always begin something wonderful again. Thanks for listening, guys. Have a great and awesome day.